It's Conduit News Radio with Paul Harrell. We have got an action packed remainder of the show. We've got some wonderful guests, and one of them uh, is with us right now. We have Chris Ann Hall. Chris Ann is a constitutional attorney. And Chris Ann, you were just on Fox and Friends yesterday, what, in New York? And then, and then now you're uh, here with us. We're honored to have you with us. Are you there? Oh, I'm, I'm excited to be here. Thank you so much. Good. Thank you. I don't know if you were able to listen, but before the break, we were talking with the attorney of Lake Hamilton Schools, not the attorney, excuse me, the superintendent of Lake Hamilton Schools. Their, their school district recently was examined closely by the United States Attorney General as a possible model for schools across America. And if you're not familiar with the Lake Hamilton School, they have a special training program through state police where a number of their administrators and school personnel, and they call it an undisclosed number, are actually able to carry guns on the school campus uh, if they get that special license that shows they've been through this extra training program. And I'm wondering if, if that becomes something that we see nationally, uh, do you think that there will be maybe some school teachers who don't get asked to do that that might say, well, what about my constitutional right to arm myself? Do you think eventually we might get to the point where we'll see a school teacher stand up and say, look, I have a constitutional right to defend myself and it doesn't end when my car drives on this school campus. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And that's part of the problem that we have with the federal government getting involved in programs like this. Uh, the federal government's got no business being involved in our local school programs and our local state and uh, uh, issues. As a matter of fact, the federal government has no business being involved in anything with schools or anything with guns. And so when they try to create standards and, and make a sweeping swath across the country, uh, doing things that they're not only not authorized to do but prohibited to do, then you, that's when you have uh, the, the rights of the people being usurped based on the judgment of the federal government. Somehow I knew you were going to say that, and that's why I wanted you to weigh in on this conversation, because I know <laughs> that you are all about state sovereignty and state rights, states rights. And, and, and a lot of governors of states around America don't realize how much constitutional authority they have. And, and, and sheriffs around the country don't realize how much constitutional power they have in their county, more so than the president of the United States. And so, you know, I think there's so many states that, that just assume that because the federal government says you can't do this, that maybe they can't. Uh, so it is, in your view, it is a state's rights issue. Oh, absolutely. But not only just the state's rights issue, but the, the purpose of the state's rights issue. Uh, our founders made it perfectly clear when they were drafting the Constitution, and even more relevant when they were ratifying the Constitution, that these were limitations to be placed on the federal government in order to secure the rights of the people. And in securing the rights of the people, it is absolutely uh, incumbent upon the state to to include their governors and to include their state legislators to make sure that they are limiting the federal government so that the rights of the people are secure. When the federal government is not limited in its power, then uh, and even in just one instance, then there is no limit to federal government power. And when there is no limit to federal government power, then the Constitution becomes a practically null and void, and the federal government's only limit becomes whatever they can design for themselves. And when that happens, we cease being a constitutional republic, and the people's rights are in peril. Exactly. Well, on that note, uh, the red flag law is being examined. The last time I checked by at least 14 states are, say they are considering it, and of particular interest to me is that our governor in our state, there was a recent uh, investigative report by one of our statewide newspapers that sort of led to this big discussion of maybe something needs to be done in Arkansas. We need to look at the red flag law. And I was very disappointed when our Republican governor said that he would be willing to consider it, willing to examine it. Of course, he said, you know, we, we have to look at this due process thing, though. Well, you know, I, mm. my view is, there's nothing to examine. It, it's not a, it's not a, we're going down a slippery slope if we allow this. It's a direct hit on the constitutional rights. Can you tell us, can you talk to the people a little bit about the red flag law and what's wrong with it and why no state should be looking at it under any circumstances? Yeah, these red flag laws are known in the legal field as gun restraining orders. And basically what they do 
is they they put a single magistrate in charge of determining whether a person uh, is fit to uh, secure their rights or not. And what happens is is that somebody based just simply on on accusation or or and and it doesn't have to involve any type of evidence or proof. There's no due process in this situation whatsoever that uh, goes to a judge and says, this person has threatened me, this person is dangerous. And then with the swipe of a pen, with no, with no presence of the person under accusation, their right to keep and bear arms are removed. And then the, the sheriff or the local law enforcement is then authorized by that judge to, to seize the weapons of whomever that person is and then the person is left to prove their innocence. It really is a, a swapping of the principles of America, the natural right to keep and bear arms, and the right to be innocent until proven guilty. Yes, it is. So, you know, when, when, uh, when that became a big news story in Arkansas, that our governor was willing to, to even consider this and, and, and look at it, examine it for our state, uh, there was a quick backlash. And I know that the governor of Texas uh, did the same thing. He actually put it in his list of, of uh, you know, things he wanted to get accomplished. And once that became apparent, the, the people of Texas, there was such a tremendous backlash that he had to back out of that and pull out. And I'm hoping that we have the same kind of backlash here so that, that our legislators and our governor know, know the red flag law on, on many fronts, because it is a violation of the first, uh, well, some people would say it's the first, the second, the, the, the fourth and the fifth amendments. And uh, some people even argue it, it is, it covers, uh, it's a violation of more of those amendments. But listen, I'm excited oh, that you're going to be coming to this Arkansas. Is, yes, yes, that's going to be great. And I, and I, before we move on, Jan, I really want to impress upon the people just how, what an awful thing these gun restraining orders are. There are ways to do this without denying due process. And we as a people have to realize how important due process is, especially when we're considering the securing of our rights. These gun restraining orders are, are, are the epitome of, of absolute despotism, and it's not something that we should consider uh, when, when we're trying to find solutions to our problems. Well, because you're guilty until proven innocent. And then, and then there's that yeah. slippery slope of who gets to decide what is mentally incompetent. And my argument is that if you are, if you are a, a psychologist, I guess a psychologist, if, if the judge recommends that you be evaluated, so a psychologist is going to get to decide whether or not you're mentally uh, competent, uh, that you're not insane, and that you can keep your guns, or you can actually get your guns back because they're take them, they're going to take them away first. And then what if that that psychologist? Uh, is an, an anti-gun person and thinks America would be better off if nobody had guns uh, and then suggests that maybe you need counseling, that you have anger issues. I mean, I could just see this turning into a nightmare uh, and it is it's, it just leaves so much room for uh, abuse of power. And I just, it, it scares me. It frightens me that even in a state where we have total control, Republicans have control of the Senate, the House, and the governor's office that, that we're even looking at this because I, I was hoping when the governor was approached with this that he would have just said absolutely not absolutely not they, they, we're talking about violations yeah. of, of the rights of the people on many fronts and so no there's nothing to discuss here but i guess we may be discussing it after all i, I wanted to cover this real yeah, quickly with they, you because we're all that way in florida yes, yes and ahead, please, but, i'm sorry <laughs> okay you're coming to arkansas uh, in February, yes. but I wanted to give people a heads up to start looking for uh, this. You're going to be traveling throughout the state of Arkansas. We have you, I think, appearing in three or four or five different cities. I know you're going to be in Hot Springs in Garland County at least one day, maybe possibly two. Uh, so I'm really excited about that. We're looking forward to seeing you here at the Gun Cave. Uh, so what can people, what is the best way for them to find out other than on our pages, uh, what you're going to be talking about uh, while you're here? Um, chrisannhall.com forward slash calendar, or just simply go to chrisannhall.com and click on our calendar page. Uh, it's K-R-I-S-A-N-N-E-H-A-L-L.com. And uh, this will be our, you know, the, the, the second month of our Liberty Tour 2019, and we're, we're so very, very excited. And, uh, you know, you can, when you come to one of our courses, I was just on a, a 
uh, Dan Abrams national network called Law and Crime with uh, with uh, two lawyers actually uh, mm -hmm. discussing Kavanaugh and just to give you an indication, uh, these two lawyers, one of them was uh, a candidate for attorney general in Virginia. They said, Christiane, it's just so amazing how you are a lawyer, but you don't speak like a lawyer. You just break things down in such a way that it makes people, uh, it's easy for people to understand these, these mm -hmm. principles that Americans have thought were complicated. And I think that's part of the gift of what we do. So we will, we will bring to you the truth that has been hidden for us for decades about how simple it is to understand the Constitution and how essential it is to secure our rights. Okay, well, we're looking forward to that. Chris Ann Hall, constitutional attorney coming to Arkansas. Thank you, Chris Ann. Thank you for what you do on the national front you, for all Jan. the people of America fighting for our constitutional rights. We'll see you later.